Good day, grade 10 learners. Welcome to Bamboo Tel Escuela. I am teacher Ronald, your today's teacher in Mathematics 10. Before we begin, make sure that you are in a comfortable place. Have you taken your snacks? It's very important that your stomach is full and your body is in a good condition so that your mind will be ready to listen and understand the lesson that we're going to discuss today. Let's start. Our lesson for today is all about interpretation of measures of position. At the end of the lesson, you are expected to interpret measures of position. Are you now ready to learn more about interpretation of measures of position? Well, before we will proceed, let us first recall some concepts that are very useful for you to accomplish all the activities. Answer the following questions basing from the given table. As you can see, from the given table, it is composed of three columns, where the first column is scores in activities, the second column is uh, the frequency, and the third column is the less than cumulative frequency. So from that table, you can now able to answer the questions. Question number one. So what is the cumulative frequency below the class interval of 82 to 91? So what do you think is the answer for that? Of course, the answer is 23. Question number two. What is the lower boundary of the interval 72 to 81? What is the answer, my dear learners? Of course, the answer is 71.5. Question number three. What is the lower boundary of the class interval 102 to 111? Of course, the answer for number three is 101.5. What about question number four? What is the cumulative frequency below the class interval 92 to 101? So the answer for that is 27. Question number 5. What is the lower boundary of the lowest class interval? So, what do you think is the answer? The answer for number 5 is 31.5 Question number 6 How many students are there in all? So, the total number of students of course, it's 45 Did you follow my dear grade 10 learners? Let's have another set of activity Match the measures of position in column A to its corresponding value in column B. Considering the set of scores 15, 23, 11, 8, 12, 15, 20, 17, 18, 25, and 14. So we have the column A, wherein number one is a decile six, Number 2 is quartile 3, number 3 is quartile 1, number 4 is percentile 50, number 5 is percentile 88. While in column B, we have the letter A is 24, letter B is 22, letter C is 20, letter D is 17.5, and letter E is 15, and letter F 12. So let us see. So the answer class or the answer minor students for number one is letter D, which is 17.5. For number two, 
is letter C, which is 20. What about the third one, my dear students? Of course, it's letter F, which is 12. And uh, number 4 is letter E, which is 15. And the last one, my dear learners, is letter A, which is 24. In the previous activity, how can we interpret the values obtained? Of course, we simply base it from the measures of position that we want to consider. If you find it difficult to interpret measures of position, let's have an example. Calculate and interpret the quartile 1, decile 7, and percentile 65 of the mathematics test scores of 50 students. So the given table, we have the first column is uh, the scores and the second column is the frequency. So from the scores, so we have 21 to 25 and the frequency is 6. A score or scores, we have 26 to 30, the frequency is 12. Then uh, 31 to 35, the frequency is 9. The scores 36 to 40, the frequency is 11. 41 to 45, the frequency is 8. And uh, the scores 46 to 50, the frequency is 4. In finding for the quartile 1, let's complete the table by having the lower boundaries and the less than cumulative frequency. So we have here now the four columns where the first column my dear learners, we have the scores, the second column is the frequency, the third column is the lower boundaries, and the fourth column is less than cumulative frequency. Of course, first, we need to identify the quartile 1 class, where quartile 1 class is equal to n over 4, where n is the total number of frequency and the total number of frequency is 50 over 4 so if we divide 50 by 4 the answer is 12.5 that means we need to find the class interval where the 12.5 score is contained note that 7th to 18th scores belong to the class interval 26 to 30 so, the 12.5 score is also within the class interval. The quartile 1 class is class interval 26 to 30. Meaning to say, the lower boundary is 25.5. The total number of frequency, we have 50. The cumulative frequency, that is 6. Frequency of quartile 1 is 12 then size of class interval is 5. And so, determining the quartile 1, we need to use the formula and substitute the given values. So, quartile 1 is equal to the lower boundary plus the quartile 1 class minus the cumulative frequency all over the frequency of quartile 1 multiplied by the interval. Then, quartile 1 is equal to 25.5 as our lower boundary plus the quartile 1 class is 12.5 minus the cumulative frequency which is 6 all over the frequency of quartile 1 is 12 multiplied by the class interval which is 5. So simplifying, quartile 1 is equal to 28.21. With a given illustration, how can we interpret the result now? Therefore, 
25% of the students have a score less than or equal to 28.21. What about Decile 7, my dear grade 10 learners? Of course, we have the given table as we completed earlier. So, what is Decile 7 class? So, Decile 7 class is 7 multiplied by the number of frequency n over 10 is equal to 7 multiplied by the value of the total number of frequency which is 50 over 10. So, 7 multiplied by 50, that is equal to 350, divide it by 10, is equal to 35. That means, we need to find the class interval where the 35th score is contained. Note that the 28 to 38 scores belong to the class interval 36 to 40. So, the 35th score is also within the class interval. The DSL 7 class is class interval 36 to 40. So, the given values are lower boundary, we have 35.5. The number of frequency n is 50. Cumulative frequency, that is 27. Frequency of decile 7 is 11 and the interval is 5. Then, substitute the given values to the formula. So, decile 7 is equal to lower boundary plus the decile 7 class minus the cumulative frequency all over the frequency of the decile 7 multiplied by the interval i. So, decile 7 is equal to 35.5 plus the decile 7 class is 35 minus the cumulative frequency, that's 27, all over the frequency of the decile 7 is 11 multiplied by the interval 5. Thus, decile 7 is equal to 39.14. So we can now conclude that 70% of the students got a score less than or equal to 39.14. What about percentile 65? As you can see, the same table is being used. So let us now identify the percentile 65 class. So, percentile 65 class is equal to 65 multiplied by the frequency over 100 is equal to 65. The total number of frequency is 50 over 100. Then 65 multiplied by 50, that is 3,250 over 100. Then dividing 3,250 to 100, the answer is 32.5. So that means we need to find the class interval where the 32.5 score is contained. Note that the 28 to 38 scores belong to the class interval 36 to 40. So, the 32.5 score is also within the class interval. The percentile 65 class is class interval 36 to 40. So, the lower boundary is equal to 35.5 the number of frequency which is n is equal to 50 the cumulative frequency is 27 the frequency of percentile 65 that is 11 and the class interval is 5 then substitute now the given values to the formula percentile 65 is equal to lower boundary plus percentile 65 class minus the cumulative frequency all over the frequency of percentile 65 multiplied to the class interval i. 
So, percentile 65 is equal to 35.5 plus the percentile 65 class is 32.5 minus the cumulative frequency is 27 all over the frequency of percentile 65 is 11 multiplied by the class interval I which is 5. So, percentile 65 is equal to 38. Therefore, 65% of the students got a score less than or equal to 38. You may also use the diagram below as your basis in interpreting measures of position. So this time, I hope that you can able now to interpret measures of position. Is it clear now, my dear learners? At this point, match the measures of position in column A to its corresponding interpretation in column B. So as you can see in column A, we have number 1, decile 1 is equal to 12. Number 2 is uh, quartile 2 is equal to 22. Number 3 Decile 7 is equal to 45.5 Number 4, percentile 30 is equal to 14.5 And number 5, percentile 90 is equal to 48 While in column B, we have letter A It means that 90% of the students got a score greater than or equal to 12 Letter B, it implies that 90% of the students got a score less than or equal to 48 while letter C it implies that 70% of the students got a score less than or equal to 14.5 letter D it means that 70% of the students got a score less than or equal to 45.5 and letter E it means that 50% of the students got a score less than or equal to 22 while in letter F, it implies that 30% of the students got a score less than or equal to 14.5. So you are given 5 seconds to answer. So the answer for number 1 is letter A. It means that 90% of the students got a score greater than or equal to 12. While in number 2, what is the answer? So, it's letter E. It means that 50% of the students got a score less than or equal to 22. What about for number 3? What do you think is the answer? Of course, the answer for number 3 is letter D. It means that 70% of the students got a score less than or equal to 45.5 what about number four number four is letter f it implies that 30 percent of the students got a score less than or equal to 14.5 and number five the answer is letter b it implies that 90 percent of the students got a score less than or equal to 48. For you to understand well the lesson, let's have this activity. Choose the measure of position inside the box that corresponds to its statement or interpretation. So we have letter A, percentile 40, letter B, decile 3, Letter E, quartile 1. Letter F, percentile 35. Letter H, decile 2. Letter L, quartile 3. Letter N, decile 7. Letter O, percentile 65. And letter S is decile 9. So, what do you think is the answer for number 1? It says that it indicates that 25% of the students obtained a grade less than or equal to 77.5. So what is the answer? 
you have your choices. So, the answer of course is letter E, which is quartile 1. What about number 2? The second is, this means that 60% of the students receive a grade greater than or equal to 81.25. So, what is the answer for number 2? The answer for number 2 is letter A, which is percentile 40. For number 3, this implies that 80% of the students got a grade greater than or equal to 77. So, the answer is letter H, which is decile 2. Number 4, it means that 75% of the students receive a grade greater than or equal to 77.5. So, what is the answer? The answer for that is letter E, which is quartile 1. Then, uh, number 5, it denotes that 90% of the students got a grade less than or equal to 89.75 so what do you think is the answer for number five the answer is letter s which is decile nine and for number six this implies that 40 percent of the students got a grade less than or equal to 81.25 and the answer is letter a which is percentile 40 Number seven, it insinuates that 75% of the students receive a grade less than or equal to 85. Of course, the answer is letter L, which is quartile 3. Number eight, the value suggests that 65% of the students obtained a grade less than or equal to 83.25. So the answer is letter O, which is percentile 65. The number 9, it represents that 30% of the students got a grade greater than or equal to 84.05. And the answer is letter N, which is decile 7. Take note. The two things that you need to consider in interpreting measures of position. First, the measures of position. And the second is the computed value. Always remember, measures of position are expressed in percent. I hope you learned something today. For questions and clarifications, you can text or call your teacher or you can message them through your group chat, messenger, or Facebook if available. Be sure that you will finish all the activities in your module so that you can submit on the scheduled time. Be sure to tune in on our school on air every day at the scheduled time at DWNDFM 88.5 kHz or watts on CMD cable television or what's on Kawayan City Division Facebook Live. Once again, this is Teacher Ronald, your teacher in Mathematics 10. Have a great day, God bless, and stay safe everyone.